I can scarcely believe we went to the moon and back. We'll have time to reflect on that later. Right now, we need to head back to the camp. Broken glass and deliver a thoroughly detailed report to Lucia. Very much to know how everyone is gonna is getting on here as well. They'd only just be gun treatment for the tempered prisoners when we left. I share your curiosity, but warning our allies of the final days is of greater importance. I speak not only of contingent, of course. The heads of state of every nation must know what we've learned. We know not when or where or in what manner the final days will begin to manifest we must see that everyone is prepared may not wish to stress the importance of description at least the public be sent in a panic not that anyone in a position to respond to should need to be told as much but it bears repeating all right Good to see you again. No worse for your lunar adventure, I hope. About that. We've done what we can for now. Believe me, we did tell you all about it. Before we do, why don't you tell us what has become the Garlemald in our absence? We succeeded in subduing the temperates inside the Tower of Babel. We took many alive. Combined them with those who were already in our custody. The numbers... Requiring care has grown exponentially. The inclement conditions here have made it difficult, if not impossible, to treat them all here. We petitioned the aid of the allied nations. Some are understandably hesitant to prefer assistance. Particularly those that were recently subject to imperial occupation. That said, so others have agreed. Grant them refugee for treatment. With the assistance of, your, assistance of your fellow scions, oh my god, we endeavor to see them safely transported and subsequently cured of the tempering. Will all the tempered be relocated? Not all, no. We have sufficient shelter to attend to those whose treatment has begun. Enough healers have volunteered to remain until their parent, or patients have recovered. Julius is one such patient though he is not yet fit to receive visitors. It was a miracle he and those in the company were not harmed in the chaos. If not for Alphano and Alice's timely assistance, Jesse and Levon would be with us. Have the Alliance leaders come to any decision regarding Garlemald? Given the tremendous ramifications of what has happened here, it will take time to determine... What must be done, in the meantime, they intend to work with the Eastern Alliance to keep a close watch over the provinces. We have other news to share. Shortly after Aunt Nima was defeated, we received reports that every tower has vanished. For mercy, the process was apparently not quite as violent as you experienced at Thavnir. Those who are trapped within them have been rescued, receiving treatment, taken in this endeavor. The beast tribes have received instructions in the magics needed to cure tempering. Asuma Toyo is no doubt, no doubt thrilled the Mother Poxy affords her so many visitors. <laughs> we are grateful for her ongoing efforts, as well as those of our comrades near and far. As for the contingent, several of our members have been granted leave to return to their homelands after the transfer of Tempered has been completed. Lucia and I will remain among, along with a small force to continue offering aid to those here in Garlemald. Empire may be no more. There are those who call these lands home. Believe, I believe that accounts for everything recent events here. What are the moon and the Telephoroi? And Daniel's dead. Xenos fucked off. Um, Zodiac is dead. Whoops. The world's coming to an end. Gods, I prayed your victory would mark the end of our troubles. You don't know. The Alliance leaders must be told. Would you be willing to contact them in our steed? I'll send a word forthwith. That's also released your fellow scions from their present duties that they may return to Charlian.
Your energies are better spent finding a means to avert the coming apocalypse. Speaking of your fellow signs, you'll be happy to know that Mistress Kryl, though still on the mend, has been moved to the Badesian Annex and given into Tataru's care. After your confrontation with Zodiac, you said Xenos took his leave. In all likelihood, has returned here to Garlemald. I have a mind to dispatch scouts to try to ascertain his whereabouts. First, wish to ask you to believe. If you believe there is merit in doing so. Admirable but futile endeavor. He simply shows when he wants to. Mayhap, you're right. I suppose if anyone is to hunt him down, it must be you. Who else could even help to bring low that monster? Forget I entertained the notion. While on the subject of Xenos, the 10th Legion has made an official proclamation. Then they denounce the Crown Prince and condemn his role in the Empire's downfall. His very title has become the source of shame among former subjects. Its continued use serves only to hinder relations with foreign nations. It's been declared Xenos Viator Galvis, the outcast and enemy of Garlemald. And Daniel is no more, and his own people are turning against him. Seems he is not but his bloodlust to keep him company. He's just gonna show up in Charlian, bro. I feel it. I feel it in my hearts of hearts. That's what's gonna happen next. Better that than an army to see it sated. At any rate, I will not keep you longer. I pray you safe passage back to Charlian. We've done a lot. Talked to a bunch of rabbits. Hung out for a bit. Smacked a few of them on the head. Gave them a bottle of <laughs> ink. Welcome back, Rat. We were terribly worried about you. When I regained consciousness, I was all aches and frostbite, exhausted of aether. So exhausted, in fact, I could only laugh. In that moment, I understood Raha's weariness from the Tower of Zot. Would that I could laugh at a time like this. Though we prevented Zordarek from being unleashed upon the world, I'm curious how else. What else took place on the moon? Yeah, Zordarek's dead. Zordarek ain't coming to do shit, bro. Because we gave him two on the back. Will Ryan Shea be joining us? Judy keeps him away, I'm afraid, though Rhett can explain why better than I. Yeah, the bunnies are on the moon. The moon's haunted, first off. Uh, not anymore, but it was haunted. Like, actually, ghosts. Force ghosts. They're like Aether ghosts. It's kind of like Force ghosts, but they're Aether ghosts. As befell Amaro the final days. And were to escape via the moon? What are the source and its reflections? I have no intention of standing by while the world falls to ruin. How do we stop this? With no answer at the present. If the celestial currents have grown stagnant, as was the case in the time of Amaro, the solution would be to alter the flow of Aether throughout the star entirely. The accomplishment was done by summoning Zodiac, sacrificing half the star's population and doing... It must... It should go without saying that such a sacrifice must not... cannot be repeated. Which leaves us with the daunting task of identifying the underlying catalyst for the final days. A feat which even the Amarotians could not accomplish. We found no clues in Mare Amatorium. There's still much we do not know about the catastrophe itself, let alone what has caused it. The corruption of the Amarotians' creation magics. But we command no such power, which invites the question, what havoc is in store for us? If I knew that much, perhaps we could draw some parallels with the events of the past and thereby some semblance of a plan. 
Perhaps we should start with the forum then? Having worked with the Loprits in secret all this time, I'm sure there's more they can tell us. I have urgent news. The forum is holding a public assembly in the pause outside. Some sort of announcement. Probably the announcement, bro. Thank you all for gathering here on such short notice. This day we must speak of grave affairs and their implications for the future of Charlian, nay, of this very star. Said affairs concern all citizens, and so we have called for a public assembly. You may have heard rumors of the Talofaroi and the havoc these madmen wreak abroad. Under normal circumstances, we would pay little heed to petty disturbances outside our borders. The final days, however, are another matter altogether. For we dare not ignore these prophetic words of Eld. The end bearers will come, ushering chaos and calamity. The final days descend and devour the very star. I've never heard this prophecy. Is it true? Will all that really happen? Yes, we're all going to die. Yourselves. The time has come to speak of the Forum's most sacred duties. But first... Give voice to the voiceless. Let bindings be unbound. By unanimous decree, I declare the enchantment broken. Master Leveilleur, if you would. Very well. Two hundred and seventy years ago, our forebears began an expedition in the Dravanian hinterlands, in search of a route to access the Ethereal Sea. This much is public knowledge. Their findings, however, would become the Forum's most closely guarded secret. What those researchers discovered in the Hinterlands was not a passage unto the Ethereal Sea, but the very heart of our star, and Hydaelyn herself. Wait, what? She spoke to them of a calamity that would extinguish all life and of a means by which we might be spared. The moon. Tis in truth a gargantuan vessel built to serve as sanctuary for her children and deliver them from this doom. Much like Nuncref's hope in ages past, it will bear the people of a world in the throes of death to a new home. Needless to say, this will be no small undertaking. To facilitate the great work, the Forum has maintained close contact with the servants of Hydaelyn, who presently reside on the moon. Convinced that the foretold end was all but inevitable, we began amassing a wealth of knowledge, not merely for the betterment of our nation, 
but in preparation for the journey to come. You reveal this to us now? By the gods, how long do we have? While we cannot say with certainty, we believe the hour to be nigh. We received a transmission from the moon suggesting as much not long ago. Which is why we must in earnest begin preparations for the great exodus. For his impressive contributions and the leadership he demonstrated during our withdrawal from Dravania, we have elected Master Leveilleur to oversee this initiative. Fellow scribes and scholars, my countrymen, we face a threat of unprecedented scale. We must challenge the trials before us with composure and conviction if we are to find salvation. The wisdom of Charlian has ever been a shining beacon in the darkness, and so it shall continue to be. It is our solemn charge to see our heritage preserved for future generations. For those who will come after, we will brave a new frontier. Administrative edicts will be relayed to all major institutions ere long. In the meantime, carry on with your duties. With that, I hereby call this assembly to a close. Do you remember what Mother told us when we visited home? That it wasn't until after we were born that Father seemed to lose himself in his work. If that great work of his was the evacuation of this star, then... Yes. It wasn't for his benefit. Would you mind waiting here a moment? I wish to speak with Father before we leave. Take your time. I wanted to type, keep it civil, but I hit down and nothing happened. I shan't be long. If it's all the same to you, I have a few choice words to share with Father as well. So, come to call us cowards and bid us join your fruitless battle against the inevitable. Nay, we do not object to the Forum's proposal. On the contrary, those who wish to flee have every right to do so. Orianger is cooperating with your associates on the moon to ensure that all is ready should evacuation be our only recourse. Then whatever your business, I suggest you be brief. Though we cannot boast the boundless wisdom of Charlian, we have first-hand knowledge of foreign cultures and have conversed with no small number of peoples. These experiences have taught us fundamental truths that cannot be recorded in any tome nor charted on any map. The beating heart of this planet is its people many of whom would give anything, even their lives, to protect the lands they love. Many may choose to join you in the end. But what of those unwilling or unable, for whom escape will never be an option? What would you have them do? To ignore the plight of those one might conceivably save is not wisdom, Father. It is indolence. 
This is why we choose to fight. We'll not ask for your understanding, Father. Only that you don't turn a blind eye to the good we have done. That we can still do. We're not children in need of protection. Hold fast to your principles and let the world burn if it please. But we believe there is still another way. And if there is, we will find it. You see if we don't. Do as you will. Just stay out of our way. Were he not so consumed with self-righteousness, he might tell you how proud he is of you both. Bold words call for bold action, and there'll be no turning to your father should plans go awry. As if I ever would. So long as there are those who wish to stay and fight for this star, we have to do what we can to help them. Damn yeah, right. <laughs> Gave your father the good words, and now we gotta get going. And if we're to do that, we'll need to be well rested. Wouldn't you agree? And having triumphed over what we once thought to be the source of all evil, I can think of no one in greater need of at least a dozen winks. It's true. Shall we then? To the annex. To prepare for tomorrow. Reminded my narrow escape from the Isle of Val, the realization running the mixture of relief and regret, why me? I asked, why me? Why us? Why now? Why wonder? There's no use fretting over cosmic morality or lack thereof. We're here, we'll get through this together. Who knows, maybe my luck will rub off and grant everyone a narrow escape. No harm in praying as much. I think those are always the saddest kind of characters who they have nothing actually going on for them, but they still live and they don't understand why. Like the survivor's guilt characters. That one always hits me. Visitor has come knocking. Whoever could it be? Shit. Oh, apologies. I um I, I didn't mean to. <clears throat> if you could spare a moment before bed. Thank you. I fear this may be the last quiet night we have to talk for quite some time. Damn shame we couldn't get Cryo or someone. I am troubled of late. Unwarranted concerns, perhaps. I hope. Nevertheless, I feel compelled to share them with you. Though you have bested your enemies thus far, Xenos, and even Zodiac. Your victories have come at a considerable cost to yourself. No one is without their limits, and you are no exception. I worry the added weight of the final days will prove more than you can bear. It is surely too much for any one woman. But you needn't bear it alone. Let me share your burden. My, uh, 
carrying capacity pales in comparison to yours, but I could still help. Shoulder the occasional satchel from your ever-growing mountain of, um, baggage. Uh huh. This is a proposal. What the fuck? You have already done so <laughs> much. Believe me of mine own encumbrances. It is only fair that I repay you in kind. Of course, it needn't be only troubles we share. Moments of joy may seem few and far between now, but there will come a time when we look back fondly on this journey. The inquiry at the Forum, our march through the snows of Garlemald, our impromptu dinner in this very room, all of it. And that is to say nothing of the journeys yet to come, to the ends of the world and beyond. Uh, uh, <clears throat> uh, but tomorrow will be no less busy than today, and I've kept you from your rest long enough. Sleep well, my friend. Because they can't factor in if a character's married or not, they really, really aren't afraid of pushing the idea that you could marry one of these characters, dude. The Red Mage Man. Thank the gods that tower is gone. The sight of it was enough to make me sick. Thank the Ilsebar contingent, more like. Word is. They fought their way into Garlemald on top of the bloody thing themselves. Not just the one, neither. All the towers have up and vanished. Aye, I heard the same. Commander Aldin and his troops helped keep casualties to a minimum, too. But is it true they brought back tempered Garlean soldiers? As Commander Aldin tells it, they've a treatment for that now. But don't you worry. Cured or not, They've no plans to bring them into the city proper. I see. Well, that's a relief then. I know we've brothers and sisters among the lot, but I can't say I'm eager to welcome them home. Wanted to think about it for a while yet. Yeah. They're to be looked after in Alagana for the time being. Yeah. What the fuck? Julia Snow. Day, another commission of paramount importance. Well, what have we here? Hmm. Hey, are you all right? that? No. The shadows play tricks. Nothing more. The towers are gone, and the Garlean threat is abated. And yet, why does it feel as though it's about to get much, much worse? Okay, seriously, what the fuck is about to happen? Was that Han? Or 
Right, I was about to call for you. I'm afraid we received another call for assistance. This one comes from Razat Han. Others have assembled in the main hall to discuss the situation. You must join them at once. Something fucking happened, dude. Our worst feels have come to pass, but moments ago we received grim tidings from the contact at Razat Han. Wild beasts have appeared as if out of nowhere, claiming one victim after another. What's more, they say the very sky burns above them. The final days are already upon us? It would appear so. Sadly, as all the information we have at the present, no doubt the people of Radzat Han are busy fighting for their lives. We must go at once, they need our help. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, Kryle, for the love of God, stay here. Similar phenomena may be. May have been observed elsewhere. If so, we must know about it at once. Be safe out there. We're gonna make first for Yelimad. Prepare ourselves for what may lie ahead. Follow the Tower of the Avenir, Hanish were beginning to enjoy semblance of peace, and now this. Do not wield the creation magics that ancients did, yet those abominations appear. What could be the cause? Would it have to be something about those who were, uh, had their aether drained? Like any tempering at all? The mind of Vitra, not enough to hold these forces, fields at fiends at bay, Razahan is in dire straits. Calamity has indeed come to Thavnir. It's all too likely that Corvos across the strait finds itself in the similar predicament. Hmm. We have to go. 